I have a tapeworm infection. By Anonymous. I was homeless and had nowhere to turn. I began living in a disgusting storage room at the house of my brother and his wife. They are hoarders and extremely filthy. They had two dogs that they didn't take care of. One of them was an actual stray they had just grabbed off the streets. They'd never taken it to a vet or gotten it dewormed. They kept it locked in a cage 24-7 or locked in a closet. I was a wage slave and worked 12 to 14 hour shifts almost daily. They never even took the dogs outside and just left the dog feces and urine on the floor. The older dog would sleep in front of my room every night and piss on the floor right there. One time the stray one ran into my room and pissed all over my floor mattress and all the clothes I owned. Despite the circumstances, I always felt bad for the dogs. I spent a lot of time with the stray one, taking it for walks early in the morning, when there was no one out. I guess this was a bad idea because now I am infected with tapeworms. Apparently, only there are only estimated to be 1,000 or so cases a year. It's like I won the reverse lottery. I'm ugly and autistic as fuck. I've known about the infection for months, but I couldn't imagine going to a doctor. There are no over-the-counter medications to deal with this. You need a prescription. Last weekend, I finally worked up the courage and went to a walk-in clinic. I told the doctor of my infection, and she disregarded it entirely. Quote, There's no way you'd get infected unless you were living in extremely unhygienic circumstances. End quote. I emphatically insisted that I did live in extremely unhygienic circumstances. She told me that if I truly had tapeworms, all I'd need to do is just take a nice bath. Well, I tried. I think there is not much left for me in this life. I still enjoy many aspects of living, but suicide seems to be the only real option left. Thank you for reading. Three billion people online, yet no online friends, by Anonymous. I'm very lonely. I'm very alone, even when I'm with people. Actually, that is when I feel my loneliness. Loneliest. It makes me feel like an alien. I will do small talk in chat rooms sometimes, but it's merely a band-aid. It's not real. I want more. In fact, when I finally leave that chat room and rip the band-aid off, it hurts worse than if I had just stayed alone that whole time. Wasted that much time for nothing, huh? None of those people talk about me or try to track me down to ask why I left either. There's some people who are so influential that if they left the whole chat room would die. I know a guy who had cancer and passed and the chat room still talked about him four years later, on a regular basis. Yeah. I am a nobody ghost. Even if I post three million messages in a chat room, no one notices me. Fuck chat rooms. A bunch of people too scared for real intimate relationships, or maybe they do have strong relationships secretly, PMing each other, and I'm just not invited to be a part of that ever. Probably that. Even if they did PM me, it would go nowhere. That's why I use chat rooms, because in chat rooms, there's lots of topics changing all the time, and it's not dependent on my participation. I have nothing in common with anyone. No common interests, no common philosophies. Anything even mildly mainstream I enjoy is dead by the time I develop an interest in it. I remember years ago I watched Metalocalypse, and it blew my mind. Come to find out that just a fucking month before, there was a huge gathering of hundreds of thousands of fans talking about it and protesting Adult Swim for canceling it. I missed it by just a month. Story of my life. There were two online friends I got along with a long time ago, but they were too fucked up even for me. One of them is a totally lost cause alcoholic, just couldn't care less if he or I lived or died at this point. He steals money from his dad for vodka. And the other is an ex-prostitute manic depressive. He attempted to murder his dad. I don't trust either of them. It's funny, the only people I get along with are dangerous criminals. Or used to, anyway. They don't talk to me anymore. Their problems are surfacing so much now. Uh, we never had anything in common anyway. We just linked each other random pics and videos and commented on them. Is that what friendship is? Maybe we were never really friends. Isn't there more than that? What is it like to have actual common interests with someone? I wish I could get really obsessed with something like The Simpsons. Not that it's a good show, but something that is timeless and has tons of material to discover and discuss with a billion like-minded fans. That is my dream. A Simpsons fan who could talk to me about it for a solid 24 hours. I can't force myself to like things, though. Huh. It must be nice. I guess that's not all there is to friendship, anyway, so it wouldn't fill the void. 
No one's ever really opened up to me. Secrets, secrets, secrets all the time. Don't you have to know somebody to be friends with them? If I was uh, given trivia all, on all my online friends I'd had over the years, I would be able to answer maybe one question. Believe me, I try to learn too. I'm a good listener. Don't have much opportunity to practice that skill, though. I couldn't even tell you that alcoholic guy's dad's name. Or what his dad is like or anything like that. Simple information. His favorite memory from childhood, I don't know. I feel like I should know that stuff and no one tells me shit. If I tell someone about my personal life, they instantly start giving me shitty advice. It's so fucking predictable. They usually don't even last four minutes before they start giving me advice on how to seek employment or friends. Trying to liberalize me to make me effeminate. Something like that. Even guys that are neats themselves somehow find my lifestyle so disturbing that they can't help themselves but stick their dumbass normie noses into my future financial situation. And they'll never let up on it. They double down if I tell them to fuck off. They make me a pet project and squeeze in little contrived commentary once in a while. It's very manipulative. I don't know what they gain from it. The funny thing is I have an inheritance coming and I'm going to be rich, and I'll tell them this, yet they still want me to get a full-time job. I don't know anything about anyone, and no one wants to get to know me, and I'm fucking alone as fuck. And every single hobby I have ever had or will ever have is a completely solitary activity forever. Anonymous, again. There are people who make more money in one month than what I will make during my entire life. There are people who will become rich by doing what they like, while I have to do what I hate just to have something to eat. There are people who are born wealthy and don't know that pain, while I grew up with it, never to become used to it. While they travel the world, I'll be taking the bus to work. While they eat whatever they want, I'll have to make do. While they don't worry about money, I have to worry about being destitute. While I have to suffer the privations of pro poverty, they'll enjoy the benefits of wealth, and that will be forever. My father and my mother. My curse. Anonymous. Anybody here with abusive parents? I'm 25 years old and my parents don't let me leave home or go out. Their argument is that they are old and they need someone to take care of them and prepare their food and whatnot. They're also very paranoid and they check my computer and my phone every time I sleep. I even tried to password protect them, but they ended up forcing me to show them what's inside. And if I refused, they'd beat me. Yes, you heard that right. My dad still beats me mercilessly every other week. And I am 25 fucking years old. I didn't go to college. I don't know what the outside world looks like. I rarely left home ever since I turned 18. And on those rare moments, they thought I did drugs. And they thought I stole money from them to go out. Because they never give me any. On multiple occasions, some money went missing from my father's locker. And he beat me up thinking that I am the one who took it. The last time that happened was less than a month ago. I'm becoming crazy. I talk to myself and I am becoming schizophrenic. I spend the entire day serving them as if I'm their slave. And I daydream or browse image boards in my free time. That's it. That's all I did during my entire painful life. I don't think I've even lived a life. I don't know anything outside of the comfort of my room. I just eat and breathe and serve my masters. I have been posting my story on image boards since 2014, when I reached my maximum capacity and can't take it anymore. I tell my story to random anonymous people on the internet. Someone suggested before that I run away and get a job and live on my own, but this is not as simple as it sounds. I don't know how to leave. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to get a job. I don't know how to find a place to stay. I don't know anything. I am extremely scared of anything and everything. Even myself, I'm afraid I'll wake up one day and just kill myself with no hesitation. I wake up every day with an intolerable feeling of dread and pain like my chest is sinking or falling into a bottomless pit. I feel like a little child. I have an unrealistic view of the outside that I've gathered up from all the media I've consumed. Sometimes I daydream that a stranger would one day show up, kill my parents, take my hand, and teach me everything I've ever missed out on, then give me a huge amount of money and place to live, then disappear. I need help and advice. I am extremely painfully tired. Talk to me at least. I am in desperate need of the illusion of human interaction. I'd kill myself if I could, but I am a coward. Anonymous. Again. I can't seem to get the reality of this world in my system. My mind constantly rejects this reality. I can't find an escape. I feel like sleeping and waking up is losing its meaning, and I have some regrets on deciding to find the truth. My vision lost its color, and understanding truth caused me to stray from my path to my dreams. 
I began to realize how hard it is to actually leave and how much things can cause us sadness. I am desperately trying to look for the light again. I can't speak to anyone about this, so here I am anonymously putting these thoughts into words. How are you today?